Hey everyone, Juju part 6 here. Today I want to talk about how to think like a Roman Empire, the Stoic philosophy of Marcus Aurelius by Donald Reperson. The book is the author attempt at trying to explain Stoicism using modern examples, which I'm not entirely sure yet if it's necessary, but nonetheless it is a very well written book. It will summarize the life of Marcus Aurelius, the last of the five good emperors of Rome, his famous book Meditation, which is his complementative book about himself, a self-reflection diary of some sort, and also Cognitive Behavior Therapy or CBT, which is a psychology technique developed from Stoicism, which makes the books uh, not only a lesson in Stoicism, but also a really great history book in Stoicism itself and a character study of Marcus Aurelius. Marcus has lived his whole life experiencing loss, but uh, since he was a child, he's always interested in wisdom and virtue. His parents are dead when he's only a few years old, then he got adopted by the Emperor Antonius. He's always very ill when he was young, but he lost 8 of his 13 children, his wife will die before him, and a lot of his mentors and friends will also be gone before him. He will die at 58, love as a wise and benevolent leader. Meanwhile, his son Commodus, who's young when Marcus was gone, we live a celebrity lifestyle away from philosophy, wisdom, and virtue that Marcus uphold. Then died at the young age of 31, living in paranoia because none of his subjects love him as a ruler, not like his father. According to the book, there are three things that Marcus have learned from Stoicism. One, a profound sense of joy or gladness and peace of mind, which comes from living with wisdom and virtue. Two, a healthy feeling of aversion to vice, like a sense of conscience, honor, dignity or integrity. 3. The desire to help both ourselves and others through friendship, kindness, and goodwill. Stoicism itself means living according to nature or to put virtue as the basis of life. Virtue itself is excellence of character that needs to be trained as a way of living. One of the ways he practices this is by avoiding sophistry that can be more easily found now with the rise of social media. People who can speak very clearly and confidently about things they don't know enough about. By contrast, Epictetus in typical stoic fashion continually warned his students not to confuse academic learning with wisdom and to avoid petty argument, hair splitting, or wasting time on abstract, academic topics. He emphasized the fundamental difference between a sophist and a stoic. The former speak to win praise from his audience, the latter to improve them by helping them to achieve wisdom and virtue. Rhetoricians strive on praise, which is vanity, philosophers love truth and embrace humility. Rhetoric is a form of entertainment, pleasant to hear, philosophy is a moral and psychological therapy, often painful to hear because it forces us to admit our own fault in order to remedy them. Sometimes the truth hurts. Stoicism helped Marcus a lot during his life and during his reign. Learning to let go of what he cannot control helps him with the frustration of the insincerity of life at court. Learning generosity and a simple life helped him respond to Rome's financial crisis. He learned to endure physical discomfort and overcome unhealthy habits too, so despite his illness, he lived longer than people expected of him. He learned to tolerate criticism and to avoid being easily swayed by fine words and flattery. He learned from everybody that he knows there are things he can learn. Instead of learning from kings or celebrities, he learned from men from humble beginnings, an unnamed slave for example. This unnamed man showed young Marcus how to endure hardship and discomfort with patience. He taught Marcus to be self-reliant and to have few needs in life. Marcus also learned from him how to turn a deaf ear towards slander and how to avoid sticking his nose into other people's concern. And we follow Marcus since his early childhood to when he started to his teenage years, become the emperor and to his death and later influence, where he always embodied a learner tendency every part of his life. He genuinely sought to transform himself into a better person instead of merely scoring points against intellectual rivals. In a way, Marcus Aurelius has proved Plato saying that the state will prosper when the philosophers were kings or the king's philosophers. With his words and especially with his deeds. The book helped explain really well that being a stoic doesn't mean you have no feelings and you're made with a heart of stone, but instead to have control over your response toward those feelings. Being indifferent towards strong emotional feelings and since they're not good or bad in itself, what is more important is our response and reaction to them after the feelings surface. The book mentions Epictetus saying that it's not the things that upsets us, 
but our judgment about things. Which is a saying that becomes the foundation on a lot of modern therapy like CBT. Evaluating in a detached manner the pros and cons of holding a certain opinion. The path of vice or following excessive desires and irrational emotion or unhealthy passions. The path of virtue or exercising self-discipline and following reason and your true values in life. Stoicism is a practice of characters and Marcus Aurelius is one of the most interesting character study and one of the most famous practitioner of Stoicism. He studied and trained to be a Stoic in the middle of politics, wars, and a plague while having a back pain and illness that will eventually lead to his death. He even had to deal with a betrayal that caused a civil war by his general and friend. This makes him This makes him a master at soft monitor self-discipline which in turn help in self-control and moderation. The book gave us a lot of context on his life so it makes what Marcus wrote on his self-reflection note meditations a lot more significant. There are a few parts of the book that makes the common mistake with a lot of self-help books. It offers that it welcomes like a filler episode, but overall it did a great job. There is a reason that the founder of Coffee and YouTuber Extraordinary Jack Septica has mentioned that this book helps him a lot. I do still think that you should still read the original Greek Stoic books from Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius especially. A lot of the nuances and details from those books are not even mentioned in this book which is a shame but understandable since it will definitely make the book much longer. But if you like what you read here, go read the OGs. Further understanding of stoicism will only help you if that's what you want. That's about it.